That was it? It just happened? <laughs> That's a potato. That's a mashed potato. <laughs> How do I turn a box of instant mashed potatoes into a sweet treat? Betty Crocker's answer, potato donuts. I'm Melinda and I'm cooking my way through Betty Crocker's 1971 recipe card library. Today we are making potato donuts, which is from section W, Foods That Go Places, card number six. The card is titled Happy Traveler Sing Along. I don't know why, I guess if you had potato donuts with you, you would be a happy traveler and you might sing about it. Who knows? Um, but I was excited to try this because I've never heard of potato donuts before, but apparently they are a thing. I found other recipes on the internet for them as well. Um, but yeah, instant mashed potatoes, a Betty Crocker classic convenience ingredient. <laughs> and then it also just uses a lot of, you know, typical baked good ingredients, your vanilla, flour, sugar, eggs, baking powder, etc. So I think it'll just be like a regular good donut that maybe the mashed potato just makes it like a little fluffier or something. I don't know. Let's find out. So the first step is to prepare potato buds, instant puffs, which is the Betty Crocker brand name. I don't have the Betty Crocker brand name. I have Idahoan <laughs> potatoes, same thing. Okay, it's gonna be fine. Okay, prepare instant potatoes as directed on package for two servings, except omit butter and salt. So I have two thirds of a cup of boiling water on the stove. We're gonna take it off the heat, add cold milk, stir in potatoes gently, Wait, what? it's boiling, I'm gonna add the milk? Okay. <laughs> so I'm adding a third of a cup of milk, and then I'm adding the two thirds cup of instant potatoes. Oopsie, that's a little bit too much. Okay, we're not all gonna go in. We're stirring, we're stirring. Let's stand until moist, and then fluff lightly with a fork. That was it? It just happened? <laughs> The potatoes just happened. They just, there they are. They're done. What the heck? That's a potato. That's a mashed potato. <laughs> what the heck? Well, that stuff's done. <laughs> that was freaky. Okay. Now, what does it say here? Add eggs, sugar, three eggs. Going in. Sugar, going in. That was uh, three quarters of a cup of sugar. Shortening and vanilla, three tablespoons of shortening, and two teaspoons of vanilla. And now we are beating thoroughly. Surely the shortening can't possibly be integrated <laughs> this way. I think the clumps are, are part of it. They're fine, right? Stir in flour. Okay, so this is two and three quarters cups of flour going in, stirring. We're stirring it in. And then we're gonna add, this is three teaspoons of baking powder. And finally, uh, some salt, nutmeg, and cinnamon. Okay, I'm just gonna stir this slowly until it's combined. All right, now we're gonna knead it a little bit on a floured board. So let me go get that set up. All right, so I'm gonna lightly flour this board. Well, maybe not, maybe not too lightly. <laughs> and then I'm gonna kind of just dump this out. It still feels very moist. So I think it's gonna need to absorb some more flour. <laughs> Knead about 10 times. Okay, we're kneading, we're kneading. Okay, that's a big clump of dough. <laughs> what are we gonna do with this? <laughs> this is my version of kneading. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Roll dough about th one third inch thick. Okay, if we're gonna be rolling it, I'm worried. I'm worried about that. Let's, let's reflower. See, there's like flecks of something in here. Is that from the potatoes? Let's take a look at the edge here. Yep. Yeah, I'm feeling good about that. Okay, so now it's gonna rest like this for 20 minutes and then we'll cut it into the donuts. 
I have a little donut cutter here. This um, is from my grandma's house, so it's authentic vintage uh, donut cutter. It's a little bit smaller than I pictured a donut to be, but I think they like will puff up bright when you fry them. So maybe this is the standard donut cutter size. We'll find out. I like that it has the hole in it, but that you could take that part out and use it as a biscuit cutter too. I think I have used it as a biscuit cutter on this channel, but today we need the whole. Cut dough with floured donut cutter. Okay, so I'm just gonna dip it in the flour here and we'll just see what we do. Um, this is supposed to make how many? One and a half dozen. So that's 12 plus six, which is 18. <laughs> I don't know if we'll get 18 from this round. We might have to like clump it together again, but maybe, I don't know. We'll try. Here we go. <sighs> the first one. Smush. Lift. <gasps> oh gosh. Okay, the hole stuck. The hole stuck. We have to collect the holes, of course. We're gonna make donut holes as well. You we have to. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. Okay, that one's stuck. Maybe I just need to be doing this. Ugh. Okay. It's, I'm like really getting a lot of cinnamon. These are going to be very flavorful. When I was researching potato donuts, I found out that the recipe has been around for over 150 years and that there's even a rumor that the original Krispy Kreme recipe had potato in it. I also saw that it was often called a spud nut in the recipe and I think that's cute, spud nut. <laughs> All right, so we've actually ended up with almost two dozen, which are a little over two dozen actually, 25, which makes me feel like maybe I rolled it a little too thin. Uh, maybe I should have measured what a third of an inch looks like. Maybe these are more like a quarter, but that's life. And I think they're gonna really puff up anyway because there's tons of eggs, there's tons of baking powder in it. It's gonna be fried. So I think that they're gonna be the perfect size. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, let's head over to the stove and get them going in the oil. All right, we're over at the stove. I've got a pot of oil here that is at approximately 375 degrees and it is time to fry the donuts. I'm nervous. I'm gonna use the spider to like drop them in, I think. And I don't want to do too many at a time. We'll start with just, this will be our test. Yee! Okay, he sunk, he sunk to the bottom, he sunk to the bottom. He's bubbling, he's bubbling. Okay, he rose, he rose, he rose to the top, he rose to the top. Okay, okay, he's puffing, he's puffing. Okay, I flipped him over, I flipped him over. <laughs> he's gold on one side. <laughs> I, have no, I have no instructions here. Fry donuts until brown, drain. They are smaller than I thought, they're smaller than I thought. Okay, these are mini donuts. Okay, it's happening, it's all happening. And um, it's happening well. It's all going according to plan. And they are just a little small, but they're cute. They're like little hostess mini donut vibes, right? That means you can just eat more of them. <laughs> I hope they're done. How, how do you know if they're done? What if they're all like doughy inside? I think they're so small that they have to fry pretty fast. They can't, they can't not be cooked inside here. <laughs> okay, our main donuts are done. It's time to send in the holes. Let's see what happens. It's gonna be chaos. Ready? Let's get all these holes in there. Go, go, go. Spin them around. Get them going. <laughs> oh my God, they're so round. Oh my God, they're so cute. Owie, okay. <laughs> They're done. Okay, we gotta let them cool and then we can give them a little frosting. While the potato donuts are cooling off a bit, I thought we could talk about the history of the instant mashed potato. So humans have been eating variations on the dehydrated potato for centuries, but the instant potatoes we know and love were cooked up in a government lab only 50 years ago. French's was the first of many companies to commercially manufacture instant mashed potato granules and release them in 1946. Vegetable dehydration research was huge during World War II, but instant potatoes didn't really catch on with civilians. Uh, once reconstituted, they were soggy and nothing like mashed potatoes and honestly reminded soldiers of their time overseas not in a good way. <laughs> then the USDA's Regional Research Center in Philadelphia developed a game-changing technique, a patented three-step process that dried the potatoes so quickly that they retained much more flavor and maintained the cell wall structure so they rehydrated better. 
Once food corporations switched to this flake method instead of the granule method, busy post-war homemakers flocked to the instant mashed potatoes and never looked back. While they will never replace a homemade mashed potato in my eyes, having this shelf-stable product that creates a creamy mash in minutes is a game changer for home cooks. Especially in recipes where the mashed potato is used as like one component of a larger recipe like our donuts, it just makes it so much easier. All right, so it's time to decorate, and to do so, I'm referencing the original Betty Crocker picture cookbook, which has just a little simple recipe to glaze donuts. Add a third of a cup of boiling water gradually to one cup of confectioner sugar. So let's do that. I have some recently boiling water here, and I'm gonna just mix her in. I'm afraid this is not the right ratio, but I guess you want a pretty thin glaze. See, I didn't even put all the water in and it's too, it's too loose. It's too loose. This is what I always have to do. I don't trust the ratios. Guess and check situation here. You put a little in, you see how it goes. You put a little bit more in, you see how it goes. I guess it's okay if it's pretty thin. Like I'm not trying to make a frosting. I don't want it to be clumpy though. Okay, okay. There's only one way to test this. There's only one way to test it. Not to the hole. <laughs> Boom. No clumps. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that's the right consistency. This is my vision. See, there's this one donut that's kind of hidden in the corner here, um, kind of behind this stalk of wheat. And it's glazed and it has little round rainbow sprinkles. So that's what I have, little round rainbow sprinkles. So I think the plan should be that we dip the donut in. And I don't know if I should flip it over so it's completely doused or if I should just have the top be covered. And then you do a little bit of that. That's the plan, I don't know. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. Let's give these a taste. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh. I mean, that's a donut. <laughs> it's a freaky looking donut, but it's a donut. <laughs> okay, time to taste. Mmm, yeah, this is a donut. <laughs> the interior is perfectly done and it's nice and fluffy. Mm -hmm. It's sugary and sweet, of course, because of the glaze, but it's not too sweet. Mmm, okay, yeah, these are really good. <laughs> Yummy. Mmm. All right, potato donuts. This was really fun. I mean, I made donuts and I'm really impressed they taste just as good as a donut you'd get at like a donut shop, but I made them at home. <laughs> so I'm pretty impressed with that. They don't look as good as a professionally made donut. I'm gonna be real with you there. You know, maybe it's the donut cutter I was using. Maybe it's like, you know, how floppy the dough was as it was being tossed in. It was kind of misshapen a bit in some cases, but other than that, I think they look pretty cute. They taste pretty good. Why potatoes in them? I don't know, but it helped make a good donut, so I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> um, I guess I'll give this five out of five red spoons. Why not? Tastes taste great. Thank you so much for watching. This is not my first time making a deep fried dessert, so you should check out Blushing Peach Fried Pies next. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, happy homemaking. Mm -hmm.